Thank you, uh, and thank you for um, to e EU FMD for organizing uh, this platform where we are able to share with the, the rest of the world what is happening in our part of the world. Um, this is a, a, a zero survey that was done uh, in, uh, in, in Zimbabwe, and um, just a bit of uh, orientation, I think uh, 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 you can see that Zimbabwe is a, a landlocked country sitting right on top of South Africa with uh, Botswana, Zambia and uh, uh, Mozambique as, uh, as the neighbors. Um, a bit of history about outbreaks in Zimbabwe. Uh, we are affected by the three SAT serotypes. Mainly the SAT2 is a, is a, is a problem. And um, uh, uh, what is important to this uh, zero survey is the fact that outbreaks, FMD outbreaks, are frequently reported in the southern, uh, the southeastern, and the western parts of the country. Uh, and these are associated; these areas are associated with the huge buffalo populations, uh, the Gonarejo National Park, um, and Nuanetsi uh, Range, which are part of uh, the, um, uh, the 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 Greater Limpopo Trans. Transfrontier Conservation uh, Initiative, um, having over 7,000, uh, 8,000 buffalo. Um, and this supports the theory in Southern Africa of buffalo as the asymptomatic carriers of such serotype FMD. Um, however, and, and uh, what I've just explained is what is happening in the southern and southeastern provinces or, or parts of, of the country. However, when you go to the northern part of uh, the country, you will find uh, that we have a large uh, buffalo population of around 6,300 uh, sitting in uh, uh, what is called the Mana Pools, um, uh, trans, uh, Man Mana Pools National Park, which is part of uh, the Lower Zambezi Mana Pools Trans Frontier Conservation Initiative uh, with, with Zambia. Uh, in this area, we have observed buffalo uh, cattle contact. Uh, we have not seen or uh, uh, had reports of, of, of clinical FMD in the area over, over quite a long period of time. In the uh, uh, past, we never used to be concerned about it because we had a, a system of uh, uh, making sure that there is no cattle in the vicinity of uh, the, the, the interface uh, uh, between uh, wildlife and, um, uh, and, and, and um, uh, human settlements. And this was because the area we are talking about uh, was tsetse infested and we didn't want to provide a blood meal for, for, for tsetse and then um, uh, support the um, uh, uh, expansion of uh, trypanosomosis. So, but over the past 15-20 uh, years there has been, um, uh, I mean after the successful uh, uh, pushing out of the tsetse belt, there's been a lot of human settlement in the area, but still we observe um, uh, no clinical FMD, and uh, over 10 to 15 years is quite a long uh, time of buffalo observed buffalo cattle conduct. Uh, and, and raising the question, could we be dealing with the uh, subclinical uh, infection in this area? And uh, the objective of this study is therefore to try and establish uh, the foot and mouth disease serological status of cattle in the periphery of uh, uh, the Lower Zambezi Manapos Trans Frontier Conservation Area on the Zimbabwean side, that is. And just a quick look at the TFCA. Uh, so we have the Lower Zambezi Manapos uh, uh, Trans Frontier Conservation Area being made up of Manapos on the Zimbabwean side and Lower Zambezi on the uh, uh, Zambian side and separated by the mighty uh, Zambezi, Zambezi River. And this is a picture from uh, the Peace uh, Parks Foundation. So the study area that we are talking about is communal settlement, rural settlement. Uh, they share the grazing, they share watering, they share uh, dipping facilities for tick control. Uh, this is a porous and fenced interface with wildlife and uh, is stretching up to, I mean, uh, we are looking at a, a distance of up to 40 kilometers from the interface. 
the climate ranges from wet dry in the Zambezi Valley to wet wet uh, on the plateau. And um, uh, we have got cattle densities that are increasing. Uh, and um, uh, cattle in this area obviously being important for draft power for, for tillage purposes. Uh, buffalo cattle contact uh, is observed. A closer look at the study area, so you will uh, see the Manapus uh, uh, Park and, and uh, sur surrounding um, uh, game, game parks uh, in, in, in green, and the dots, the red dots are representing epidemiological units, which are deep tanks, which are situated um, in, at various distances from the game park. So the red dots is uh, 0 to 20 kilometers. We actually got some that are right in the uh, uh, game park. And then uh, the purple dots are representing distances that are over uh, uh, 20 kilometers. Um, the study involved a cross-sectional study, which uh, um, uh, had... Uh, which selected 24 dip tanks or AP units out of uh, a possible 48 dip tanks um, and uh, 548 cattle out of uh, 28,400 uh, in the 48 dip tanks. And um, uh, we, we had a lo longitudinal study of 10 of the AP units that were selected from the 24 uh, where we were tracking uh, uh, cattle, a total of 690 cattle out of, out of 9,901 cattle um, through the season, the wet dry, January to March, the cold dry, June to August, and the wet dry, September to November. Um, and this was between 2016 and 2018. Uh, we also ran alongside a questionnaire where 492 respondents uh, um, uh, uh, were involved and we were interrogating uh, known risk factors for FMD. Um, the serum collected from the, the, the cattle was uh, uh, tested using uh, the prior check uh, FMD virus uh, non-structural -stru uh, protein test, the ELISA, and uh, uh, just a quick look at uh, the results that we got from that uh, study. So we had 45 animals, only 45, out of a total of 1,238 uh, testing positive to NSP ELISA and representing a 3.6% zero prevalence. Um, when we looked at the two districts that were involved, we could uh, uh, see that there was... Um, uh, a zero prevalence of 6.0 compared to 2.4 between the two districts. And when we looked at the distance uh, from the game park, we could see that there was a, a higher zero prevalence of 4.8 in the uh, AP units that were less than, or, um, uh, that were 20 kilometers or, or less from the game park uh, compared to 2.0% uh, for App units that were above 20, kilometer, 20 kilometers from the park. Uh, the seasonal uh, uh, pattern from the longitudinal study uh, uh, indicated the hot dry season as the season with the highest prevalence of 7.2 uh, against 3.6 for the hot wet season and 2.0 for the cold dry season. Uh, there was not much difference in the, uh, when, when we we're looking at the age of the animals. So we uh, could see from this uh, study that uh, um, uh, looking at the distance from the park, which we were mainly interested in, we had uh, 2.1 uh, 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 chances uh, I mean, two times uh, chances of getting uh, zero positive animals when you were 20 kilometers or less from the game park compared to uh, above uh, 20 kilometers from the, uh, the game park. We also observed that uh, um, uh, uh, when, you, when you were in the hot dry season, you had 3.6 um, uh, chances of uh, uh, testing positive an animal drawn in that period had 3.6 uh, uh, times chances of testing positive compared to the cold dry season. So 
looking at these results, we were uh, actually not expecting uh, being so close to the game park with the buffalo theory. We were not expecting that we would get that much uh, less um, uh, seropositivity. The 45 NSP positives were sub subjected to uh, liquid phase blocking ELISA, and the results that we got uh, were uh, 17 positives out of 45, representing a 1% when you uh, uh, compare it to the total um, 1,238 samples that were, were picked. We tried to um, look at the, uh, the distribution amongst the three uh, serotypes where we found that SAT1 was dominating, uh, followed by SAT2, and followed by uh, SAT3. Um, the questionnaire that we administered uh, out of 492 respondents, we had a 16% that indicated that they were seeing buffalo in the area. And we had 15% uh, that indicated that their cattle sometimes mix with, with wild buffalo at grazing and watering. Actually, the major issue here was that they, while they are looking after their cattle, they also have problems of buffalo that come and forage on their, on their crops, indicating a very high possibility of uh, buffalo cattle contact. And 69% um, uh, of them market their cattle outside the area. And this was significant in, in that uh, um, if the animals are moving out of this area, in, uh, and, and, and there is a chance that they are infected, there is a possibility of spreading the disease to uh, areas considered clean in, in the interior of the country. Um, for discussion, we found that the 4.0% um, uh, NSP zero pre prevalence and 1% uh, liquid phase uh, blocking ELISA zero pre prevalence in an env environment of uh, buffalo cattle mixing was considered uh, very low. And, uh, and this according to quite a number of publications, but we mentioned here, uh, Miguel or, and Ital, or 2013, where uh, they reported 36.7% NSP uh, zero prevalence and 30.6% uh, in, in two uh, sites in the southern part of, uh, in, in the southeastern part of the country. So raising the question here, do buffalo in the lower Zambezi carry the FMD virus? And um, uh, when we were preparing this, and uh, before I listened to Nick's presentation um, uh, two days ago, the understanding in Zimbabwe is that no work had, had been done. And uh, we, we now realize that there are some viruses that had been uh, at Pebrite which Nick uh, pre presented, which we will also want to relate to what we are, we are having. Um, and having no information on the Zimbabwean side, we decided that we look across uh, the Zambezi to our neighbors in Zambia, and there we found uh, uh, in the lower Zambezi uh, National Park, just across the river, that uh, a study had been uh, done by Sinkala et, et al in 2015, where 25 uh, buffaloes were captured uh, between 2011 and 2012. And the seroprevalences uh, by liquid phase bro blocking ELI ELISA um, uh, were 88% for SAT1, 84%, SAT2, 8%, SAT3. The pattern does seem to relate to what we found in our very small zero uh, prevalence in, uh, on the south southern part of the Zambezi. And in the same study, they managed to isolate uh, SAT2 from uh, pro probing samples. Um, by, sorry, sorry, I think it's, then um, we look, looking at this work, we actually find that there's a, a lot of work that needs to be done on the um, mana pools side of the TFCA so that we get to understand the serotypes and strains that are, that are involved. From Nick's presentation, we now see that there is a SAT1 um, that was isolated in that area, and, and that is agreeing with the results that we, 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 we got. Uh, but, but there's also need to further investigate what factors are at play that are responsible for the low uh, seroprevalence. Uh, to us, this investigation is very important because it may provide solutions to 
uh, FMD management in the area. How do we live with the buffalo and uh, make sure that there is no spillage of uh, viruses into the domestic population? And um, uh, if we can get these answers from the way the people live and behave in the area, the better, because it will uh, not be uh, difficult to convince them to continue with the ways they have been um, uh, living and trying to uh, maybe take the same behaviors to other areas where we are having problems in the south and the southeastern uh, parts of the country. Um, thank you. My presentation ends here, and uh, I would like to ac acknowledge the European Union for the assistance that was provided through the production and conservation uh, in partnerships and um, also to uh, the EU FMD who sponsored the kits that were used for this test. Uh, I thank you. Thank you.